Good afternoon, I'm Olivia Quay. Thanks for joining us on ST Live. A short time ago, Deputy Prime Minister and Finance Minister Lawrence Wong announcing a $1.5 billion support package. It will provide relief for the lower income and more vulnerable groups as well as help for companies in their transformation. Well, this comes as Singaporeans are facing rising prices and a higher cost of living. Here's DPM Wong with the details. The support measures in this package are tilted towards helping our lower income and vulnerable groups because they are the ones who are disproportionately impacted by the effects of inflation. So let me go through the key items in this package. First, we will permanently strengthen support for households that are most in need. In particular, I will enhance the Comcare short to medium term assistance and long term assistance rates. The Singapore Allowance and Monthly Pension Ceiling for pensioners who draw lower pensions will also be enhanced in tandem. So these enhancements to the rates will help them with the higher cost of living on a permanent basis. Second, I will extend a one-off GSD voucher cash or GSDV cash special payment of up to $300 in August. This will benefit about 1.5 lower income to middle income workers as well as retirees without income. So altogether about 1.5 million Singaporeans. And this is over and above the enhancement to GSDV cash I announced in the budget, which means taken together, GSDV cash recipients will receive up to $700 in August this year. Third, we will continue to look out for lower income and vulnerable workers during this difficult period. One way is to ensure that employers continue to hire and pay lower wage workers higher wages, better wages, as part of our progressive wage model. And to give this a further push, I will enhance the progressive wage credit scheme this year so that the government takes on a larger proportion of the wage increases. And this enhancement will also help to reduce the cost burden for employers. I will also extend the jobs growth incentive to sustain support for employers that hire more vulnerable workers. And this extension will be for six months from October this year to March 2023. SMSG will share more details later, in particular about the uh, parameters of the progressive wage credit scheme. Fourth, we will continue to help Singaporean households with the sharp rise in utilities bills. In the budget, I've already provided a fair amount of U-safe rebates for those living in HDB flats, with more given to those living in smaller flats. So this time, I will provide a once-off $100 household utilities credit to all Singaporean households, including those living in private property. Fifth, we will provide more help for businesses as well as specific segments. And the specific segments include self-employed persons who rely on the vehicles for their livelihood, as well as those who are impacted by the export ban on live chickens. For businesses in this higher energy cost environment, they will need to continue to restructure and become more energy efficient in order to remain competitive and we will provide support to firms who need that extra lift to sustain their transformation efforts. Well, DPN Wong also says the government will not draw on past reserves to fund this support package. Instead, funding will come from the fiscal outturn of FY 2021, which was better than expected, and the ministries will reprioritize within their existing budgets to fund the package. We collected higher revenues due to the stronger than expected economic recovery last year and we used less of the budget set aside for COVID-19 spending because the Omicron variant turned out to be less severe than anticipated. So we will not pass a supplementary budget at this point. We are still early in the financial year and Parliament had just approved the budget for financial year 2022 just three months ago. Instead, the ministries will reprioritize within their existing budgets to fund this package. We have to brace ourselves for a bumpy ride ahead. The situation is highly fluid and the government will continue to monitor it closely and adjust 
our measures and programs as necessary. We will be upfront in sharing with Singaporeans the challenges ahead and how we intend to go about tackling them. The bottom line is that we are all in this together and I'm confident that we will get through this together as one united people. Our coverage continues on straitstimes.com and on Facebook as well as YouTube. Don't forget to hit subscribe to stay informed and activate the bell icon on YouTube to catch live news updates. I'm Olivia Quay and I'll be back at 5.30pm on The Big Story to further delve into these new support measures and I'll see you then.